Hey there, quick note before we dive in, what you're watching right now is a lesson from one of my courses that I've decided to release completely for free here on YouTube so you don't have to pay a dime. So instead of asking you to buy my course, if you want to show your appreciation, here's a couple of things that you can do. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. These small actions tell YouTube to share my content with more people, which is a huge help. Also, feel free to check out my recommended equipment links in the description below. If you do purchase equipment from these links, I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you whatsoever. Or if you want to, you can leave me a super thanks or even just hit play on one of my playlists. I know it sounds silly, but if you just hit play on one of my playlists and let it play in the background, even if you're not paying attention, it again, it tells YouTube, hey, people are watching these videos. I'm going to push it out to more people. So even if you just want to do that, I would love it. I would appreciate it so much. And then lastly, if you're looking for more personalized help, I do offer private coaching that you can find in the description of this video. Either way, I really appreciate you whether you choose to do one of these things or not just by simply watching this video it means a lot to me thank you so much now let's get to the lesson okay next up is the microphone's gain output basically this is just how much gain it takes to get healthy levels out of your microphone i'll use two microphones as my example here the rode ntg4 and the rode ntg5 if i had the gain on my interface turned up to 12 o'clock i would be getting pretty good levels out of the rode ntg5 but if I had the same interface turned up to 12 o'clock with the Rode NTG4, I would be getting significantly lower levels because the NTG4 has a lower gain output than the NTG5 does. So some microphones require you to turn up the gain on the interface more to get good levels when recording because those microphones have a lower gain output than others. The Shure SM7B is famously known for having really low gain output and that requires you to turn the gain on a lot of interfaces up to 100% just to get normal levels when recording. But remember what we talked about in the self noise section. The higher you have to turn up the gain, the more prevalent the self noise in the audio will be. When it comes to microphones like this, the Shure SM7B, most people end up buying a gain booster like a cloud lifter, for example. This gain booster goes between your microphone and the interface and increases the gain output of the microphone, which allows you to not have to turn up the interface as much as you would, which in turn reduces the amount of self noise present in your audio. There's a few different gain boosters out there to choose from, and you can find those over at my recommended equipment page. Also, audio interfaces and mixers are getting better and better these days and producing more gain output for microphones, so some more recent interfaces and mixers will be good enough to power low-gain microphones like the SM7B. 